Attorney General Nkez Roth of sponsors of anti-gay bill on the minority side of parliament after he accused them of pushing the bill to score political points as he questions their motive. Everything connected with this bill is politically motivated. There's some judges and and, and co who are sponsored this bill. Are they not taking a position which is markedly different from what they took about eight years ago? And as the rift between the executive and the legislature deepens, a parliamentary affairs analyst is calling for consensus building on the matter. That we need to build bridges, to build consensus, not only between majority and the minority in the House, but also between the executive and the legislature. And uh, top story is always brought to you by Telecell. Now, tonight, Attorney General and Minister for Justice, Godfrey Yabu Adame, has incurred the wrath of sponsor of the, of the anti-gay bill on the minority side in Parliament as he tore into them, accusing them of engaging in partisan politics on such a sensitive issue. He's also questioning the push for President Akufuado to assent to the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill passed by Parliament in February. Now, Parliament is in a standoff with the presidency over the anti-LGBTQI plus bill following the presidency decision to wait on the Supreme Court to arrive at a decision on a suit filed against it. We hear from the AG shortly, but first, uh, let's uh, uh, bring you the advice he gave when the bill was in the consideration stage. Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Kweku Asante, who has been following this particular issue uh, since it began, uh, has joined me in studio with our statement. Kweku, what does the statement say? Well, so the Attorney General put mm. out a very lengthy 18-page statement to the, the, the Chairman of the Co Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee. He raised certain preliminary objections. He says, overall... The purpose of the bill is to provide a legislative framework for addressing issues on LGBTQ matters. Against this background, I proceed to conduct an analysis of the bill, and this will be primarily based on the Constitution. For instance, he spoke about the bill imposing a charge on the Consolidated Fund mm -hmm. and talks about how that could potentially be an avenue for unconstitutionality because, as you may know, Article 108 prohibits private members' bill from imposing a charge on the consolidated fund but obviously at the end of everything the attorney general seemed to have given the bill a, a clean bill of health for mm -hmm. parliament to proceed for instance it says that the promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family value values bill is a private member's bill and is subject to article 108 for the purposes of article 108 of the constitution further some provisions of the bill repeat existing legislation, particularly the Marriages Act. It goes on and on. It said the restrictions on the dissemination of certain kinds of information directed at children are not consistent with the Constitution. The prohibition on adoption, fostering, and marriage between the persons of the same sex placed by clauses 17 and 18 of the bill are again not consistent with the Constitution. Attention is also drawn to the possible implementation challenges likely to be faced after the bill is passed. Some provisions, when implemented, will violate some fundamental human rights and freedoms, particularly the, 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 the right to pri privacy. So that was Attorney General then. He sp also spoke about the, the certain amendments that he himself had proposed, and he did propose up to even 20 amendments. It will interest you to know that the current bill in its name mm. was proposed by the Attorney General. Oh, The, okay. the bill was proper Ghanaian, uh, and he did certain changes to it and decided that the Ghanaian in the bill, the Ghanaian in the name of the bill should be taken out because the name was Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill. He, mm. he, he advised mm. to take the proper out and the Ghanaian also out. So okay. the Attorney General raised concerns about constitutionality but went on to almost give the committee some go ahead that if you're able to address these issues, then you can go ahead mm. and implement it. Interesting. Now, uh, after giving this advice, the issue, uh, I mean, where the bill was passed by Parliament, but when the President refused to assent to the bill, Parliament, I mean, led by the Speaker, also decided that because the President had done that, and again, there was, uh, there's been a, 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 a suit uh, for interlocutory injunction against uh, the Parliament in passing the nominations of the President, they will also not pass it. The um, Attorney General has been speaking, I'm speaking in an interview with Joy FM, Attorney General Godfrey Abu Adami challenged the intent 
behind the push for the bill. I had actually mooted bills in Parliament, sponsored bills in Parliament, which seek to actually protect the public place. There's a contract amendment act which I got Parliament to pass in July last year. And that bill had to do with prohibiting a public officer from awarding or, or again to the award of compound interest in any contract entered into on behalf of the state. That, that's a contract that re, that, that's, that's a bill that really has a tendency to save the nation huge billions of cities. That bill was passed in July 2023. It was only brought to the president for his assent about three weeks ago. So clearly, it must only be politics which will excite the interest of parliament in this manner as to even when there's a court process pending, force the transmission of the bill to the president for his assent. And I made the point, and I still repeat, that everything connected with this bill is politically motivated. The some judges and, and, and crew who are sponsored this bill, are they not take a position which is markedly different from what they took about eight years ago when they were in, in government? The some judges not captured on, radio, on, on, on video as actually advocating the re- respect for, for, for gay rights. As President Muhammad, when he was vice president, also not captured on video as also advocating respect and tolerance for, for gay rights. So how come the same president are now the ones advocating the passage of this law? So that was Attorney General Godfrey Yaboa Dami. Let's bring in one of the proponents of the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill, um, Emmanuel Kwesi Bejra, who is a co-sponsor of this particular bill. Thanks for joining us, sir. Now, first off, what role has politics in your push for the passage of this bill? <laughs> well, uh, good evening, and thank you so much for reaching out to me. Uh, I will say categorically that there's no politics in, uh, in pushing for this bill. Um, you are aware that we are eight sponsors of the bill, and one of our sponsors comes from our friends from the majority side. That's the Reverend uh, Intim Forjo, who is from the MPP side. And so if there is anything to go by, uh, since we have our colleagues from the other side supporting him. Having said that, you have some of our colleagues from the other side who brought amendment the former majority leader, Honorable Chi Mensamboso, supported the bill to the letter. His amendments were all carried out. The Honorable former Minister for um, Science and uh, Technology, uh, who also supported it and gave us some explanation, uh, Dr. Freie, giving us some explanation uh, with medical uh, understanding. And so clearly there was no political push for this bill. And so I don't have one. I don't believe any of my colleagues mm. who sponsored this bill have won mm. uh, any political connection to this bill. Mm. How then do you respond to the AG who is accusing you and your other sponsors of engaging in politics? Well, I, I don't know where he's taking it from. Uh, I don't believe that any of us are engaging in politics in, or, or, or of this. If he thinks that any of us are engaging in politics in with this bill, then he should come out to name the person. I believe he said he mentioned Sam George in particular. Sam George is not the, uh, the only sponsor. We are eight sponsors, and I mentioned that one of us is, is from the other side. And so does it that mean that my colleague from the other side is also doing politics with this? Mm, well, but, but people say that, I mean, since this bill was passed, we've heard that Ghana is likely to lose millions of dollars as a result of the passage of this bill. Aren't you moved to probably reconsider your stance or aren't you moved in any way that even though we're going to lose all of these millions of dollars, I mean, you're still not perturbed and, and this should stand? <laughs> I don't think anybody's, uh, or any, anybody thinks that Ghana will be losing. Whoever thinks that Ghana will be losing millions of CDs, uh, have that in a, as a figment of his own imagination. Uh, no institution has ever come out to say that because you have passed this bill, I will not give you, uh, uh, you know, whatever that is due you, uh, whether it is a grant or a loan or facility, or have you had anybody saying that I will not uh, bring investment to Ghana? I, I have not had any. The only person I've had was the ambassador, the um, U.S. ambassador, who alleged, you know, by saying that when she met the 
journalists saying that uh, people from that community will not will not be able to bring investment to this country. And also, I, I, I also heard uh, the UN rapporteur on human rights also making some statement to that effect, and and then the IMF. But in all, we have not had any um, any any institution or anyone coming to say that I'm withdrawing my support for Ghana because of this. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you if you have heard but, of but, any. But, but, but you've mentioned some institutions that you've had uh, sort of created the impression that this is likely to happen. Yes, you know, any 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 anyone who have support for 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 this bill who also would like to support us. There are institutions that will be willing uh, that are you know morally right that that has all that it takes to to support us are willing also to come and invest in this country uh this is our culture this is how we are and if you feel that you don't uh you cannot uh, stay with us in our condition as we are then you better don't stay with us you better take your investment away i've said it over and over that i'm one of the people who push for any person any institution that we will promote and fund any activities or you know uh that is connected to this community i will rise up up against that person the person will have to move his business away from we don't need those businesses in in, in the country if they are here they should come about it to say that yes this is our business and therefore we are moving out of this country and we'll be we'll be happy for the person to move out for us to have space for our people who have the moral conscience to move this you know country forward mm. in the right direction that engaging in activities that we think is affront to our dignity and our, our our culture i mean in all fairness i mean say you are in government and your 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 government needs all of this all of these monies to help you execute your agenda you're saying that you will look at all of those monies look at your agenda that you have to prosecute to those monies and still say that even though you're going to lose them you still stand by the bill the bill must be assented to the moment the moment we equate this bill to financial inducement or financial support, we are missing the mark. I mean, the abuse that we passed, I mean, recently, recently we passed a bill on, 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 on a private member's bill that was passed when, you know, that was passed in the House, and, and the president assented to it, which has to do uh, with, with uh, the penalty, you know, for that matter, except the which capital one, which was not assented to by the president, which the death penalty has been passed, it was assented to, by the president, How, who has who has raised an issue concerning that? But this particular one, people are raising issue because it borders on our culture. Now, let me let me give you the reverse. Can I go to America now, or any of the developed nations that have this, you know, in place? This community of people living there. Can I go there and marry? Uh, in addition to my wife now, uh, a polygamous marriage, I cannot live in that country. It's the law against anyone who will have the polygamous marriage. And so we should not equate this bill to any financial inducement or financial investment, you know, for, 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 for anyone to think that uh, without, you know, we have support, we cannot do anything. My brother, this is a country that is rich in gold, rich in oil resources, rich with cocoa in all aspects of natural resources. So why can't we harness? We have to depend on our slave master. We have to depend on anybody telling you that, do this before I give you fund- funding. <laughs> if that is it, then we all of us, including myself, leaders, we have missed it and we have lost the way. Okay. We better give way to others to come and rule this country. Mm. We cannot continue like that. We have everything in this country to make it up. I don't think even my government, if it's in power, and today and they, 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 they want any support, and, and, and I, I want to be on record that if my government, NDC government, comes to power today and he wants to support us, I will rise up against that government. Mm. Okay. Uh, Honorable, do stay with me. Let me bring in very Reverend Father Clement Kwesi AJ, who is Secretary General to the Catholic Bishops' Conference. Uh, Reverend, grateful for joining us here. Uh, the Catholic Bishops' Conference has made a- its stance clear on this bill. Now, the AG says all of the people who have been, uh, you know, uh, supporting this bill are doing that from a political point of view. I'm not sure you include that. But what's your response uh, to, to such, uh, you know, a viewpoint from, from the Attorney General? Thank you. I don't think that the Attorney General is being fair. That everyone who opposes, I mean, who is supportive of this bill, is 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 is, is doing that from a political point of view. I mean, that is not correct. That's not correct at all. You don't bring politics into this. If NDC is able to be having a problem, fine. 
But it shouldn't include the churches. I mean, the faith-based organizations. That is not right. Mm. After all, when the bill was passed, it, we, 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 we were following it. It was 100%. So were they being partisan in, in the bill? Both MTP and NDC, they were supported and passed about 100%. So we can't just say that, I mean, all those who are supporting the bill, they are doing that from the point of view of politics. I mean, that is not right. And that is not correct. I don't, and I don't know why you are saying that. Is it because of those who sponsored I mean, about eight, seven of them are from the from the from the, from the um, minority side, and only one is from the majority side. But when the bill was put, was 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 was, was brought before Parliament, it was passed hundred percent. So, so I mean, if you look at it, yes, it's been passed, but assenting to, the, to it has been a problem because, according to the presidency, there's uh, there's been a case filed against that in the Supreme Court. I mean, what do you make of the happening after the bill was passed? It is it is a bit unfortunate. You see that this is coming, this is coming up. For me, it's like our democracy is young. We are growing. These things may come up. What they need to do is to sit down behind the scenes and talk. Because it affects both of them. Like the legislature has its role to play, the executive has its role to play, and the judicial. I mean, the checks and balances are okay. They are good for us. Once in a while, they may have this kind of uh, problems and so on. But for me, it's a young, it's a young, it's a young democracy, and we are growing. But it's unfortunate for me. The bill, I mean, the, the bill should have been transmitted to the president. And there are rules. I mean, there are a particular one more thing that is clear. If you look at it, even though you have a problem, I've heard what the, what the, what the, uh, the attorney general said, give you a reason and so on. This is what the reason the president could have given and sent it back to parliament without the memorandum for them to look at them. They didn't do that. And now you are, giving, you are coming to give us reasons. The constitution doesn't say, I think they should give us reasons. The president should write a memorandum with all the reasons for the parliament, for parliament, and it's for the legislature to consider. That wasn't done. Well, that wasn't well, done. And you are saying, because there was an injunction, well, there was no injunction on you. It was rather on parliament not to, not to transmit. So it has nothing to do with it. Look, whether, whether, whether the parliament would transmit or not, it has nothing to do with you, the president. We don't know what they are playing this game. But, but 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 I mean, the Constitution also says that if a bill is passed and there's an interlocutory injunction against that bill, the president would have to wait for the processes at the Supreme Court to be exhausted before he signs it. So he's, he's doing what the Constitution mandates him to do. Is it not fair to give him that time to let the court processes finish and then he can ascend to the bill? The transmission of of the transmission of the of the of the of the bill to the president was the, the interlocutory for me so far as I understand it, was on the judiciary and not oh, sorry was on the legislature and not the legislature. Mm. was not on the it was on the president okay. it was on the parliamentary on was in parliament on parliament speaker not transmit and not the legislature. so let them fight for their own right whether whether in fact the the the, 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 the injunction can play can play against them or not. It is their problem, the legislature and not the president. Mm, mm. For me that's why I have no problem. Fighting for them. Meanwhile they can also be of age. Parliament is a little bit So so is is the conference disappointed in the presidency and and, and in general in what is happening now? Come again. So is the, is I mean the is, is is the conference, you know, the Catholic Bishops Conference disappointed in the fact that the president has not assented to this bill and in what is happening after the bill was passed by parliament. Yeah, the, 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 the conference is not happy. Actually, they even intend to, to, to approve the president, to have to, to also understand him. And so you can't just, just also sit down and just listen, just listen, whatever the radio is saying, others are saying, you need to go to the person and say, I mean, and have a discussion with him. Because obviously, this understanding, consensus, and trying to make sure that the country moves forward. But the country is neither for NPC or NPP. It's for all of us. But the country has a constitution to, to do us. But they are not happy with it because if the president will not sign, I mean, for me, we should have, we should have, we should have, the bill shall be transmitted to him and then for him to give his reason why he cannot sign. That's, I think, the best thing.
Okay. All the reasons that are generally. I mean, some of, I mean, most of them are, are general reasons. But it is not raised when you have when, 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 when you have read them by a letter of your secretary, not the task. I mean, that is not that is not the way the things should be done. That's not the way things should be done. I mm. think for me, the president didn't didn't, 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 didn't didn't do well now. And now, so whatever the lady is saying now, for me, it's an afterthought. Thank you very much, Reverend Father uh, Clement J, Secretary General to the Catholic Bishops Conference there. Now, uh, on this same issue, there's been a standoff between presidency and the parliament due to the president's refusal to assent to the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill due to an interlocutory injunction at the Supreme Court that has resulted in the suspension of the confirmation of the president's new minister designate. Now, Executive Director of the African Center for Parliamentary Affairs, Dr. Rashid Rahman, wants more consensus built on the issues. It just signals for me uh, the deteriorating um, uh, level of relationship between the two arms of government. Look, right from the beginning of this eighth parliament, because of its character and nature, some of us have said over and over that we need, you know, find a way to build bridges, to build consensus, not only between the majority and the minority in the House, but also between the executive and the legislature, given the fact that, you know, this is not the seventh parliament where we have Right Honorable Michael Quay as Speaker of Parliament, uh, who is from the same stock, uh, like the president. Dr. Rashid Rahman is the executive director of the African Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Joining us on the telephone lines now is uh, the one of the affected ministers, lawyer Andre Japamesa, who is minister designate for tourism, arts, and culture. Uh, well, I'm grateful to you for joining us, lawyer Mesa. You must be bothered by this development, no? Well, let me say good evening to your cherished view, uh, listeners. Uh, yes, it's worrying, but uh, I guess that uh, it is what it is, and uh, we just have to deal with it and see how this matter is resolved so that we can begin uh, the work that is excellent the president intends for us to go and do out our designated ministries. Actually, in your absence and in the absence of a substantive minister, the sector or the ministry will experience a, a certain shortfall. What's the arrangement? I'm sure even though you are not there yet, but you have an eye on it. What's the arrangement to ensure that the ministry does not suffer for what's happening? Well, thankfully, His Excellency the President has appointed uh, caretaker ministers for the ministries where they are, the, the ministers are going through the parliamentary process. And so I have uh, engagements with uh, the Honorable Asamoa Watin, who is the caretaker minister for the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture, on a regular basis to uh, keep me up to speed about some of the issues that have come up that requires urgent attention and of course he is mandated by law to then carry them out but i i i get briefed on on a day-by-day -day basis by himself and the chief director of the ministry so um we're keeping our eye on on the issues that are waiting the processes to be completed so that we can go informally to begin our work okay were you disappointed on the day the speaker i mean agent the house in the dying because of what was happening well i i was surprised uh, because I, i've seen the rate that um, my good friend uh, honorable Dafiawapo has filed and it's really in 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 substance challenging the ministers who have been moved from one ministry or the other uh, to new ministries. Uh, and of course, I mean, the letter that the President's communications director issued uh, suggested in part that those ministers have been terminated. But if you read the entirety of the document, uh, which as lawyers, we are trained to glean the intention of uh, uh, the, the writer from the totality of, of the document, you can see that the intention of the president was to reassign some ministers, okay? And, and so he is challenging the termination and reassignment, if you like. Uh, it has nothing to do with ministers who have been appointed afresh, who have gone through the vetting process. And so I was surprised that the speaker came out to say that he was not going to uh, 
uh, continue with the approval processes uh, because of the injunction application that has been filed. Uh, it came as a surprise to me, but uh, it is what it is, and we just have to deal with it and see how the the, the issues play out. Mm. Uh, I, I hope that it can be resolved as soon as possible so that the business of uh, state can, can continue with the ministers taking their offices and working to prosecute the agenda of the people of Ghana. Mm. Uh, are you are you by any chance hoping that maybe parliament will be reconvened anytime soon for the conferment to be done? Well, that would be my expectation because I believe that we do to come back sometime in May and uh, spending the whole of the rest of the month in April uh, just so this matter can be dealt with, I think, would be a stretch. And as would be my expectation. But of course, I mean, that's entirely within the bosom of the president and leadership of parliament, including the speaker to, um, as it were, engage and try and resolve this matter so that if there's a need for parliament to be recalled, which I would expect should be the case, then, then we can go back and, and deal with this matter. Okay. Uh, especially when the report of the appointment committee was to approve at least the first nine that I've seen by consensus. So really, uh, it shouldn't be something that should, should, should take a lot of time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Grateful to you, Lawyer Mesa, for joining us. He is Minister Designate for Tourism, Arts and Culture. Uh, so, Mr. Bejra, as an MP, aren't you worried that, I mean, ministers that are supposed to help keep government business running have not been confirmed because of what's happening? Yeah, I'm really... Uh, but as, as my colleague has mentioned, uh, this is how it is. Uh, we all go by the rule of law. If the rule of... One rule of law says that uh, if there's an uh, an injunction, interlocutory injunction on one set, and the other set also has interlocutory injunction, uh, we go by the rule of law. <laughs> I don't see it as, as a problem at all. My only worry is that the government business uh, may suffer, uh, as, as we have now. Uh, and so, just as my, my, my good friend, uh, Alaji Dramani, has mentioned, that we should have a consensus, a backdoor consensus. We should have this backdoor consensus. This is the first time we have a hung parliament with a speaker coming from the other side. And so, there should be that rapport, there should be that relationship building between the two uh, functions, that if there's a function anyway, between the speaker and the presidency. Uh, for the presidency to think that they have they have so much power than the legislative arms of government. I think that 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 is not the best at all. Yeah. All right. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Emmanuel Bedra is a member of parliament and co-sponsor of the anti-gay bill. Well, um, as always, top story is brought to you by Telesel Connecting Energies. Up next is Ghana Connect with Kweku Asante. Good evening, ladies and. So this week, Joy News premiered its latest hotline documentary on the free senior high school program titled Empty Plates. And the program really brought to the fore some of the key challenges that this program is facing, in particular, feeding challenge. So many students going to bed without any food and so many students going to bed not with enough food or not with quality food. In fact, yesterday... Join News held a, 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 an event to try and get ideas on how we get to fix the challenge with free senior high school, particularly feeding. And we've heard a lot about how the nutritious meals that should be provided for students are not getting in and how that can affect their development, their growth, and their studies. So today